Thank you, Wayne. I talk about first impressions, lasting relationships, and all the communicating in between. These are, most of what I talk about is, is common sense, stuff that you already knew or once knew and forgot or thought, I always suspected that would happen. A, a lot of what I talk about is just going to remind you of stuff that you do naturally because actually everybody in this room, everybody you know was born with awesome people skills. Babies have got fantastic people skills, but we were all born with what I call the, the four-pack, basic four-pack of superpowers. And when I say superpower, I don't mean uh, jumping over a building like Superman does. We've got machines that can do that. I mean, for example, everybody was born with enthusiasm. Otherwise, you'd never have made it out. <laughs> we were all born with curiosity. It's a human survival skill. We were all born with the ability to process feedback. You burn, burn your finger on the stove when you're three years old, you think, I'm not going to do that again. So, to evolve and get better. And the big one, the biggie of all of them is empathy. Whether you like it or not, we were born filled to hear with empathy. One day old babies cry when they hear other babies cry. What's that all about? It's the fact that, and you know, it's with us all our lives and your best friend, your, the, the best thing you've got going for you when you connect with other people is the fact that their empathy is switched on and buzzing in the background. They want, a lot of people won't admit it. Whether they like it or not, their empathy is going full blast in the background all the time. Why else could you sit in a dark room, stare at a wall, a screen, and feel happy or sad or cry? It's because they know how to grab you by the empathy and give it a good tweak. What we're talking about today, how to connect in business in 90 seconds or less, is about getting cooperation from other people. So you don't have to learn German spot welding, flamenco dancing, and pottery to, have, to be able to connect with other people. You just have to reveal the things that you already knew. That in order to make a full connection with somebody else, in order to become fully connected with somebody else, three things have to happen in their minds unconsciously. They have to say, I trust you, you make sense, and you move me. In fact, it was Aristotle, 3,000 years ago, 2,500 years ago, who called it ethos, pathos, and logos. In order to connect with someone, uh, ethos means your ethics have to be evident, um, that your logos, your logic has to work, and your pathos, you have to connect with the emotions. To be fully connected, you have to do all those three things. Some people can do one or two. Most people can't do all three. As we go through this 75 minutes, we're going to look through those three different areas and how they impact on your dealings with other people. And they will massively change your life, not when you learn how to do them, but when you remember how to do them, because babies still do it that way. So let me ask you, let's start with first impressions, which, in other words, which is, I trust you. Trust comes, immediately we look at somebody, but let me ask you, how long do you think it takes to decide whether or not we like someone for the first time? I'll say some numbers. All I want you to do is make a noise. Clap or stamp your feet or slap the person in front of you around the back of the head. <laughs> Anything to make a noise. So how about 10 minutes? How about 5 minutes? You guys are good. How about 90 seconds? Not a chance. How about 10 seconds? The Harvard School of Health Sciences did the best research on the subject. The title of their paper read, Students seeing a two-second video clip of a teacher with no sound came to the same conclusions about that teacher as students who'd spent an entire semester with them. Two seconds, you know that. You look at somebody and in immediately, is that person charming or alarming? Because it actually comes because of the fact we actually have three brains. We all have three brains. We have a thing called the reptilian brain, which sits at the top of your spine. It's, it's the oldest brain we have. The reptilian brain is responsible for looking out for you. It's, it, it, it takes care of things like visual tracking. If somebody walked across the room, you don't have to go, oh, where did they go? Oh, there they are. Oh, they no. You can unconsciously do that. It's, it's also responsible for the startle reflex. When you jump out of the way, that's not conscious. When you're driving and you suddenly... That's your reptilian brain. It's working your peripheral vision, all kinds of stuff in the background. It's also responsible, though, for something called the fight or flight response, which is incorrectly named. Because the reptilian brain, when it sees another living thing, actually makes one of four decisions. Do I ignore it? Do I eat it? Do I mate with it? Or do I run for it? <laughs> or all of the above. No. <laughs> but that's what's actually happening. So the moment somebody, if somebody walked through that door right now, your reptilian brain and theirs 
is thinking, am I in danger here or am I okay? But it's unconscious. It's not a conscious decision. But when you meet someone for the first time, it's working. To finish, the, the other two brains, your limbic system, is responsible for your emotions. It's also completely involuntary. You cannot control it. The only thing we can control is this cauliflower that sits up here, which is your, your, your uh, neocortex. That attempts to control your other brains. But when you see someone for the first time, we decide in two seconds whether we like the person or not. But so big deal. Why should it matter? Why should it matter if you like somebody? Anybody? Build rapport. Build, build rapport. Thank you. you Any? Sorry? You won't trust them if you don't like them. You won't trust them if you don't like them. That's, that's very good. To continue on. To continue on. Actually, it's simpler than that. And thank you for the answers. This side's leading, by the way, right now. <laughs> this quadrant's leading. You guys. Um, it's simpler than that. When you like someone, you tend to see the best in them. If you don't like them, you tend to see the worst in them. It's involuntary. It's your subconscious. It's your, your reptilian brain doing it. If I like the guy, all he's jumping around tells me he's enthusiastic. If I don't like him, he's an idiot. <laughs> if I like the woman, she's kind. If I don't like her, she's weak. I was doing this talk in, in, in Portugal to the, the whole tourism department. And the... See, look, someone's just come in. Two seconds to look at the guy. Charming or alarming? He's thinking, uh, I love it when people come in late. Yeah, I was doing this thing in Portugal, and the head of tourism at lunchtime, he said, no, you know, Nick, you're absolutely right. A guy came into my office this morning. The moment he walked through the door, I wasn't easy with him. There was something about him I didn't like. And he came in and he said, he knew this person and that person and this person and that person. You know what? He was a creepy name dropper. But if I'd have liked him, he'd have been one hell of a well-connected guy. So we make those decisions in a flash. But there are three reasons why it's important that we like other people. First one is that, that when people like you, they tend to see the best in you. The second one, when you like someone, you look for opportunities to say yes to them. It's your reptilian brain again. It's looking for, if you don't like them, you're looking for opportunities to say no. It will steer your thinking to say no. I was doing a talk in, in, in Philadelphia not too long ago. And uh, I arrived there the day before. And about 11 o'clock in the morning, I could hear laughter coming from the rooms around me. And because, because of my uh, uh, superpowers, my, the empathy, you tend to feel the same way. We pick up on stuff, and I tended to feel the same way. It's a good feeling. The next day, though, when I went to do my speech, it was about the same time, I left the room, I had some books in my hand, and I, the laughter was, again, it was in this room, and it was across the, the corridor. And I thought, this is great. And partly because I was going to speak, speak to a very large accounting firm, and I, they wanted an emphasis on fun at the firm, too. So <laughs> this, was really, this was really great. Then I heard this noise. The corridor was kind of curved, and I heard this as if someone, well, it was somebody running along the corridor with a trolley. And a woman came into sight, and, and she saw me. She said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. It was housekeeping. It was the housekeeping woman. And then she came past me, and I, I said, it suddenly clicked. This must be housekeeping in these rooms. And I said, are these your colleagues in here, uh, laughing and having fun? She said, yeah, I'm really sorry. I said, no, 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 no. no. I, I said, they were like, doing the same thing yesterday. She said, yeah. I said, can I talk to them for a few minutes? She said, well, she was really suspicious. Oh, sorry, we I said, look, I'm not a cop. I don't work for the hotel. <laughs> and I held up my book. I said, look, I'm a, I write books. I just want to know. So, anyway, eventually she wheedled them out, and they stood there in front of me in the corridor. And I said, are you guys having fun? Because just... This is probably not the best job in the world. Uh, and I, I said, are you guys having fun? And uh, they said, yeah. I said, how do you do that? Because when my books are all based on modeling excellence in people, and you, you never ask someone why they do it. You ask them, how do you do it? What's going on? And there was silence. They were looking like this. What does it take for you all to have fun? How do you do this? And one woman at the back, who hadn't been looking at me at all, she was such very sheepish. She looked at me and said, it's simple. You have to like each other. She said, if you don't like each other, you can't have fun. She said, if we have one, these are her words, if we have one sourpuss on the shift, the day drags on forever. We don't do good work and we go home miserable. If we all get on, we go home happy, we work really well. This is very important because the number one reason for job satisfaction and happiness is this, the quality of your relationships with other people. Sure, money is important, but it's only to a certain extent. In fact, near the end, I'm going to show you what is the single activity that gives the most enjoyment to the most people in the most countries. So what is it, when you see someone for the first time, what is it that you're picking up on? Anybody? Body language. Sorry? Body language, Body language yeah. Thank you, but a little bit deeper, or 
wider than that. The charisma, their personality. That's a good answer. It's actually, you actually pick up on someone's attitude. Your empathy, your superpower, is reading their attitude. And an attitude, yes, if it's across a crowded room, across the deli, the subway train, uh, it is body language you're picking up. But there's more to it than simple body language because it incorporates expressions and innuendo and all sorts of things and the way you dress yourself. Everything we're talking about today is about getting cooperation from other people when you want cooperation. It's not about jumping around the company saying, you like me, you like me, you like me. No, no, it's not that. It's not that at all. But when you want cooperation, if you want cooperation, you do this. If you want confrontation, you do that. And we'll go through what those things are. This is not a, a new lifestyle, but it's, it's, it's a really good idea, if you want cooperation, to do certain things. Because then life becomes easy. If you, do the, if you don't do that, life becomes a struggle. So the first thing we pick up on is someone's attitude. It is your attitude at the beginning of an encounter more than anything else that determines your success or failure. Because other people, they can't help it, they pick up on your attitude because their empathy is working at full speed. An attitude is made up of approximately 55% what you see, in other words, body language, body language and personal packaging. About 38% voice tone, and about 7% is the words you use. So go figure email for starters. If you email and say to someone, you drive me crazy, they don't know whether you mean they make you angry, they make you laugh, or you're falling in love with them. They have no idea. Because there's no voice tone and no body language. Body language always, always comes first. And I can prove it to you, because if I stood here right now and said, I'm having a fabulous time, <laughs> you wouldn't believe the words I say. You'd believe my body language. Or if I said, you're the best audience I've ever worked with, especially you. You would believe my voice tone over my body language. It's only when all three things, the visual, the vocal, and the words, the verbal, when all those three things are saying the same thing, the reptilian brain will pick up uh, integrity, wholeness, or we call it congruence. In fact, we're going to talk about the ABCs of a first impression. It stands for attitude, body language, and congruence. When you are congruent, when you are fully congruent, you are believable. Look, I have a mother-in-law who for years used to say, so nice to see you, dear. <laughs> she was incongruent. I didn't believe her because her expressions said something else. So all three things have to be working well. But the visual is very, very important. In fact, I'll prove it to you now. Can you all stand up? Okay. Put your arms out sideways. Don't grope anyone unless they ask you to. <laughs> Palms up. Now, with your forefinger and thumb of your right hand, make a circle. Bend your right arm at the elbow. Turn the circle towards your face. And place it against your chin. <laughs> this is your chin, hello. <laughs> your chin. <laughs> Look at Megan here. <laughs> People believe what they see before what they... Please stay standing. I want you, I want you to, 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 to move at least 20 feet to introduce yourself to someone you don't know. So in other words, move around the room. Go find someone you don't know, at least 20, 10, 15 feet away. <laughs> this is like everything, first and foremost, actually, a networking event. The idea is that you go meet people you don't know. And so you just did that, and you introduce yourself to someone, and they introduce themselves to you. I will not pick somebody out and say, what was the name of the person you met? Because I don't know if, you, if everyone remembers, because we have this funny thing. It's because so much is going on when you meet someone for the first time. In fact, all your senses are going, all of them. Um, your reptilian brain is so super heightened, uh, the only other times it really happens that you use all senses is during sex and when you're eating. Um, but when you meet someone, you're looking at them, you're touching them, so you're feeling them, uh, you, you are hearing them, and you're smelling stuff about them, and maybe even tasting, because you can't smell without tasting or taste without smelling. So, there's some, so we forget stuff. By the time they're halfway through the second name, you've forgotten the first name. But it's just a bad habit, and you can get over habits like that. But if I did say to you, what co did you, you met somebody? Okay, fine. Just, do you remember the, the color of their eyes? No. Okay, fair enough. We'll get to that in a minute. And so, yeah, when we meet people, we remember their names or we forget their names, but it's the beginning and, the, and, the, and your reptilian brain is going like, like crazy. I'm going to talk to you for, for a little while now uh, because we're, we're, on, we're 